Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' exciting book. Sir Cause the Bull Ape, banished from the ape tribe of Kerchak, drops unseen from the trees. Jane Porter, horrified, terror-stricken, finds herself in the brute's hairy arms. She kicks and beats the beast. Her struggle is useless. Turkos sweeps her off her feet and carries her into the lower branches of a giant tree. Porter and Philander stand petrified, unable to grasp what's taking place before their very eyes. They see the ape, they see Jane, but so utterly unbelievable. So fantastic is the scene, they can't grasp its horror. Oh, Jane! Jane! Jabbering and pointing, what happened? Oh, Jane, Jane, my little baby, my little girl. Wait, Philander, Cowboy. What? Jane, Jane was walking in front of us. We heard her scream, ran forward, and then we saw her struggling. With what, man? Struggling with what? I don't know. I couldn't see. The, the, she was whisked away into the trees. Was it? Was it the man who rescued us? The man that saved you from the lion? No, no, I'm sure it wasn't. Quick, Professor, pull yourself together. Did you see who or what it was? It was an ape, I'm sure. An ape? Oh, Why didn't you shoot? We couldn't. We might have killed James. Well, this way, come on. Follow me, come on. Don't stand there. Follow me, come on. James screams, carry faintly to Tarzan, swinging his way through the trees. He stops, hangs from a branch for a moment, listening. That sounds like she... He strains his ears, hoping to catch some other sound that will indicate more accurately the direction. It is she! Hand over hand, Tarzan drops to the lower jungle terrace. He heads in the direction of Jane's call for help. Far below him and away toward the sea, Clayton Porter and Philander thrash their way through twisting vine and tearing thorn. Down from the treetops, flashing behind the dense screen of Virgil, drops Tarzan. The ape man's strong, accurate fingers grasp branch and vine, touch them a bare second while the keen eyes find the next hold. Clayton Porter and Philander break through the underbrush, force their way deeper into the jungle. Tarzan, quickly, silently, alert, listening for another scream, drops hand over hand to the jungle floor. He raises his head. His nostrils quiver. He turns to face the breeze, trying to catch some trace of Jane's scent spore to satisfy himself that it really was she. For a moment, he stares at the ground below, then the trees above. The ape in him, by virtue of training and environment, tells him the entire story as plainly as if he'd been present at the girl's capture. Again, he scents the humid jungle air. It was she! Tarzan glances quickly at a bow where a caterpillar has been crushed by Turkos's brutish foot. Instinctively, he knows where the same foot would touch in the next stride. His eyes gleam as he thinks what he'll do to the mighty Turkos when he catches him. And with the speed of a lance, he disappears in the tortuous pathway of the ape's trail. Jane's screams fade in the distance. The short tropic twilight is already upon the jungle. Professor Porter, Clayton, and Philander stumble headlong into the ever creasing blackness of the jungle. Come on! can't keep up with me. I'm going on alone. Wait. Wait, Clayton. I'm coming as fast as I can. That's the same. I'm going on. What can we do? I, I, I can't think, Clayton. I, I can't feel her. She must... Come on. We're wasting time. But, Clayton, we haven't the faintest idea of where we are. We can't hear Jane. If we see her, what am I to do, Professor? Uh, what, uh, what, what do you mean? Am I to shoot? Yes. Yes. Shoot. I don't know, but... I think I recognize this part of the jungle. Oh, it all looks so much alike, but then the problem uh, yes, might be... Yes, it, 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 it looks all so much alike. Just as you say, since Jane's cries have stopped, we, we have the least idea of where we are going. I'm sure that the last scream we heard was over this way. To the left, I mean. Oh, that's just the trouble. Our sense of direction is gone. Completely. I would have sworn that the last scream came from the right. Then, then you suggest, Clayton... But we separate and, and, and search individually. That is a sensible suggestion, Professor. And if either of us find anything, we'll fire a rifle. All right. But be careful. Why, we're right on the edge of the clearing. Well, here, here's the hut. Uh, then, uh, then, Philander, we, we simply blundered around in a circle. Almost silently, the ape man swings through the trees toward Turkos and his prey. Turkos's keen ears catch the faint sound of pursuit. At last, overtaken, he drops down into a small open blade and turns to defend his prize. He sees that his pursuer is Tarzan, his hated foe. Tarzan sounds like a leopard in the 
one quarter her body flattened against the tree, watches speechless. She stares at Tarzan, then at Turcos. Horror, fascination, fear, and admiration mingle in her staring eyes as she watches the circling pair. Tarzan leaps! So does Turcos! Like two boys, they go trying to get each other's throat. Turcos reaches out his long, hairy arms. His claw like hands seek a deadly hold. Tarzan sidesteps, then blows, the brute's arm passes over his head. Now the ape man lunges forward. He's outside the great ape's sweeping arm. Tarzan's fist lands with terrific force in Turkos' face. Turkos turns. Again, that death dealing reach. Again, Tarzan's right step to duck. Tarzan's right hand flashes off the grass to eat for the brute. With the speed of a striking snake, Tarzan's left arm flashes up and down, in and out. The gleaming blade of the hunting knife sinks again and again, deep into the heart of the maddened ape. Turkos, lifeless, slumps to the ground. Tarzan places his foot on its neck, beats his broad chest with his clenched fist, and raises his face to the sky. <laughs> Deepening darkness enfolds the jungle. Clayton, Philander, and Professor Porter, convinced of the futility of searching further, have entered the hut. Uh, I shall lie down now and try, try to sleep. Early tomorrow, as soon as it's light, I shall take what food I can and carry it and continue my search until I found her, my little girl. I, I won't return without her. I shall go with you, of course. And count on me also. I knew that you'd offer your assistance, Clayton, and, and you too, dear old friend, Philander, but you mustn't. Jane, Jane is beyond needing our help. I simply go because what else can I do? But, Potter, I don't know what to say, but, but what good will it do? To go off there in, in the jungle, it's suicide. It can't do Jane any more good. What you say, Clayton, is true, but to leave her out there, not to make any effort to find her... Then I'll go with you. And, Potter, my dear Potter, you cannot deny me the privilege of friendship... I'll go, too. Ah, no, no, it, it is I alone who may go. She is, was my daughter. All that was left on earth for me to love. I shall go with you. Uh, Clayton, I... I... I claim the same right. I, too, love Jane. Clayton, give me that rifle. What? What? I'm going to search. Now, Philander, uh, come over here. There's nothing to be done now. It will soon be dark. Porter's right. Jane is beyond aid, and with, with what we'll have to hunt for tomorrow, and what we'll have to do when we find a Jane, well, well, we'd better rest. But Clayton, you ask the impossible. We can't rest. I can't what can we do here? Comfort Porter? Impossible. No, no, Philander. All there is left to do is wait until daylight. As Tarzan's call of victory echoes through the jungle... Jane Porter, speechless, almost hysterical from sheer fright, springs forward with outstretched arms. Tarzan holds the shaking girl to him with one bronze arm and soothingly, caressingly runs his hand over her hair. The ape man doesn't know what to think. Already he's spoken to the men of the party and they don't understand him, so why should this white she? All he can do is quiet her terror much as he would one of the little apes of the tribe who has so narrowly escaped the gleaming fangs of Numa the lion or Saber the lioness. Jane Porter stirs in his arms, frees herself from his grasp. Oh, how, how can I thank you? That's me. No, I can't even think of it. Tarzan shakes his head. A look almost pathetic comes to his eyes. I wish you could speak English. Who are you? Who... Can you see? Again, Tarzan shakes his head. Pietro. No. There can you see. No. Tarzan looks helplessly at Jane Porter. She steps back a pace and takes Tarzan by the arm. Well, you understand my French and German just about as well as they did in Paris or Berlin. Why? Why, your skin is white. White skin. Tarzan taps himself on the chest with his closed fist. White skin. White skin. The ape man repeats the phrase and then points to Jane. Jane! 
Jane. Jane. Why? Kim. Jane. Why? Kim. Jane. Pointing first to himself, then to Jane, Tarzan repeats wonderingly his first English words. Tarzan, able to write his own name, yet without knowledge of its English pronunciation, has accepted Jane's translation. Inadvertently, she has stumbled upon the English equivalent of the ape word Tarzan. As yet, she does not know that her rescuer is Tarzan of the Apes. 